So, hi everyone, it's your favorite millennial introvert, black single mom here, and today I want to talk about a very heartbreaking story that I feel is imperative that I share it, and I will continue to do this work to continue to save lives, including our children's lives, because of the abuse that they are being um, subjected to. So this story, uh, I think they said it's coming out of New York. It's about a mother who has terminal cancer. Um, actually, she had cancer first, and then it I think it went away or progressed into terminal cancer. And it's showing the abuse that she is left under by her husband. And I just want, I, can't, I don't even have the words. I did already shed tears for this woman. I don't even know her. I already shed tears for this woman. I don't even know her, and I probably care about her more than her husband did. So go ahead and watch the video, and I'll offer my commentary at the end. I hate you, Catherine. I hate you. I regret every minute of my life the fact that I met you. This is quite possibly one of the most heartbreaking videos that I have ever created. And it does not have a happy ending. And with that, I give an extreme trigger warning. I hate you, and I'll be filing for divorce as soon as I possibly can. In this video is Alan Kassenhoff. It may be pronounced Kassenhoff, but I could not confirm that. In bed is his wife, Catherine. She had just had surgery from breast cancer a couple of days prior. Take a listen. I'm not taking her. I'm not taking her. She's spoiled, and I'm not taking her. She will be punished by not going today. You're her She's parent. By, I'm not and taking her. You need to take her to school. No, I'm not. I cannot do it. I'm then in she bed. Won't go. I'm lying in bed. I can't then do get it. Get her out of try. bed. You take her to school, please. Get her out of bed, and I'll take Stop her. Stop talking that her horrible bed. way to her. Get her out of bed. She's no. Spoiled. You. And I'm not dealing with her anymore. I will no longer take her to activities over the weekend. I will no longer do nice things for her. She will be treated the way this everyone is else is treated. And you need to take Despite her multiple battles with cancer, the abuse continues. And it all happens right in front of their children. Yes, yes! 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 Yeah, they will come. Say you're sorry. No! 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 Say you're sorry. No! Stop it! Just Stop, Allie. Allie! Do not talk to Allie like that. He left. Recently, Catherine was diagnosed with more cancer. This time, it was terminal. But that doesn't stop Alan. Let's try to calm him down. Alan, I have to go to my doctor now. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I you, need to. Well, go you to don't, I don't care. That's what you don't understand. You I don't need care. to calm I'm down. I'm leaving. Bye. I'm leaving. Bye. I'm not dealing with these kids anymore. You're not dealing with these kids anymore? They're your children. I have violin practice to do with Charlotte. I don't care, you fat loser. What'd you call me? A fat loser. One more time. A Look fat, old loser who I hate. Say it again. Keep going. This Despite this evidence, Alan had Catherine arrested in 2022. Catherine fought the false allegations and the courts believed her. And they dropped everything that she was charged with. But this is the heartbreaking part. In a post made a few days ago by Catherine, this is what she says. It is with profound heartbreak that I hope none of you experience. Today I am writing that this is my last post ever. Today is the end. Stop talking. 
talking to people? Videos that I have ever created. And it does not have a happy ending. And with that, I give an extreme trigger warning. I hate you, and I'll be filing for divorce as soon as I possibly can. And this video is Alan Kassenhoff. It may be pronounced Kassenhoff, but I could not confirm that. In bed is his wife, Catherine. She had just had surgery from breast cancer a couple of days prior. Take a listen. I'm not taking her. I'm not taking her. She's spoiled, and I'm not taking her. She will be punished by not going today. You're her She's parent. By, I'm not taking her. You need to her. take her to school. No, I'm not. I cannot do it. I'm then in she bed. She won't go. I'm lying in bed. I can't then do get it. Get her out of try. bed. You take her to school, please. Get her out of bed, and I'll take Stop her. Stop talking in that horrible way to her. Get her out of bed. No. She's spoiled. You. And I'm not dealing with her anymore. I will no longer take her to activities over the weekend. I will no longer do nice things for her. She will be treated the way this everyone is school, else is treated. And you need to take Despite her multiple battles with cancer, the abuse continues. And it all happens right in front of their children. Say you're sorry. No! 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 Say you're sorry. No! Stop it! Just no, talk to Allie. Do not talk to Allie like that. Stop, stop. He left. Recently, Catherine was diagnosed with more cancer. This time, it was terminal. But that doesn't stop Alan. Let's try to calm him down. Alan, I have to go to my doctor now. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. I you, need to. What, you don't, I don't care. care. That's what you don't understand. You I don't need care. to calm I'm down. Leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm not dealing with these kids You're not dealing with these kids anymore? They're your children. I regret every minute of my life the fact that I met you. So I uh, shared the comments so that you all can know who to contact. We are working together. Sometimes the only people you have are going to be other women, other single mothers. I was especially disturbed but not surprised that I saw people talking about she should have chose better. It's her fault for not being psychic and an FBI analyst and knowing that this guy was going to be an entire demon. I think as a mother myself, I'm most concerned about her babies being left with this psycho. Um, if he treated her like that while she was alive, I can only imagine how much worse it got because now he has to do things on his own to raise his own children. And he just seems like an extremely selfish person that is going to definitely continue to be abusive to the children. I don't know her family situation. But stories like this really resonate with me because I just got out of a narcissistic, um, abusive relationship. I was planning to marry this man. And once um, his abuse really uh, revealed itself, we already had children together. It took years for the ugliness to really escalate, as abuse typically does. And it's sad that I have to explain all this because people will question and ask me, why did I stay? Why, did I cho why didn't I choose better, et cetera, et cetera basically continuing to victim blame um, the person who's innocent, who did nothing wrong, but loved the wrong person. Um, and that even that's not being wrong. You did nothing wrong. That was a mistake you made. You're human and you're allowed to make mistakes. And unfortunately, sometimes those mistakes can end up to be deadly. So I ended up leaving my kids, uh, my younger kids' father in right after the pandemic has started. I think we left around 20, April, 2021. And I never looked back. We cleared the entire fucking house while he was at work. I told him while COVID was happening, I didn't want him to come home because he wanted to continue to work. And I was concerned for my health and my children's health because we know not knew nothing at that time about the virus when it first came out. We were scared and I was just seeing a lot of the death toll increasing and I was just trying to keep my children and me safe. Um, he took this as he doesn't need to come home anymore not even to stand at a window like other people were doing on tv to wave to their loved ones 
um, was in contact with me, nothing. But the crazy thing was I wasn't really bothered by that. I knew that every day that he was not in that house, uh, driving me crazy, um, was another day that I got to live. Another day that I was able to survive in that abusive relationship. There were tons of data that I will share because I like to re- I always give my receipts and support my facts with data and having supporting facts with the information I'm giving you all because I care a lot about what I'm doing and trying to save lives. I don't want people to be confused or have to go look for anything if I can help them see the the whole picture and the total picture. Um, so I ended up leaving him while he was at work. I go on to tell women how and when to leave an abuser. I knew he wasn't going to be coming home for a while. Um, he would come home sometimes in between like a month or whatever, like in that last year. And we never like really lived together. At some point I did have to live with him because I didn't have a choice. <clears throat> and that's when the abuse got even worse and then of course people know that when women get pregnant that's usually when abuse will escalate and then when a victim tries to leave that's when abuse escalate even more um and sometimes it could be fatal so I actually was blessed that my ex-husband um cared enough about me to offer to help me get a way out because I could not afford to leave because of the situation that my abuser had put me in he was not allowing me to work isolated me from my family, was basically a textbook. He is a textbook narcissist. And I didn't know what a narcissist was when I even got with him. So yes, I do have to also explain that because people wonder, well, if you know he's a narcissist, why did you get with him? Common sense would tell you, I didn't know. <laughs> you don't know what you're getting into. You're up, you're falling in love with a person who is presenting themselves as a good person. He told me everything that I wanted to hear and I had no no qualms of, as to what he was saying. You can't have it both ways. You can't one minute try to act like men are good men are good people, and then the other second telling women that they need to be uh, always just looking at men as being these dishonest creatures, which they really are. You have to pick pick a side. They're either dishonest and cruel and lying and manipulative predators, or they are good people that we should be able to think that we can trust. So, of course, being raised in a black male worshiping culture and just in a patriarchy in general, women do tend to believe that men are our saviors. We're going to get married to them. They're going to protect and provide us. He's going to be a white knight. And men know this. They know women have this fairy tale in their head. They know that women have been conditioned a certain way and socialized a certain way. So they play on this um, notion and they and it's easy for us to just fall into their their web of lies and deceit because we are already right for the picking because that's how our families raised us to believe that you just find a good husband, you get married first before you have children, and you're you're going to be a good woman because you did it the quote-unquote religious way and now you're not quote-unquote living in sin by having children out of wedlock or moving in with someone before marriage. Honestly, not marrying him is what saved my life, I feel. I'm grateful that my sister stayed by my side. Like, no matter how much he tried to isolate me, all I've ever had in this world a lot of times was my sister. I do feel that we've saved each other's lives a few times, more than we can count. Um, We have, you know, our parents are still alive. We have a brother. We have other relatives. We have friends. But no one has ever been, like, there for us, no matter what, except the two of us through thick and thin, through everything for 40-something years. And my sister would call me regularly and remind me, I'm sorry, I'm going to cry. I always cry when I talk about this because my sister didn't have to do this, but she did because she loves me. She would call me regularly and remind me that whatever he was saying, it was a lie that I'm a good mother, that I am beautiful, that I do deserve to be happy. I do deserve better than him. And you may, if you've never been in an abusive relationship, especially with a narcissist, may think that's it. That's all she did. It was more than enough. 
Like, if I wouldn't have had her or been raised to create my own self-esteem, I know he would have ended up killing me. And that's why I will continue, continue to fight for other women and children forever. Because I was there and even before I got there, I saw it with my mothers and my grandma, my mother and my grandmother, the women in my life. All the women I love, I've seen them in abusive relationships my entire life. And I always tried my best to not have that be me. And it wasn't me for a very long time until I met him. He was the worst relationship I'd ever been in my entire life. And that's including the man who abandoned my son and me. This person, my youngest kid's father, was the worst. And that's why I say I don't disagree with women who choose to not have children. I think it's heartbreaking that you have to let go of something that you absolutely feel you cannot live without if you absolutely want to be a mother because of males. There are options for you. And those are the women I support because there is a way to still get to be a mother and not feel like a man is the, the your savior, the center of your life. There are other ways to be happy and be a mom. And maybe you'll find a husband later. It's okay if you didn't get married first. It's okay if that marriage or that relationship didn't work where you thought you were going to marry that man and you saw the red flags and got out to save your life and your children's life. Because narcissists, they don't even care about their children. You saw the video. They don't care about their kids either. And they will probably end up killing them also. I cannot imagine as a mom if I were knowing that I'm dying. And knowing that this demon is who my kids are going to be left with. That would be worse than the pain and suffering and agony I am going through. People will never understand a mother, a true mom, not a narcissistic mother or selfish, whatever, like a real mother who loves her kids more than she loves herself. They'll never understand that kind of pain. It's a no, you can't protect your own children. So I say this message to tell women and men, fuck your marriage. Stop pushing marriage onto women. They are single mothers for a reason. Do not force women to feel like they have to be mothers if they don't want children. Do not force women to feel like they have to be wives if they don't want a husband. Many of us have dealt with trauma, sexual trauma, and abuse before we even left the house at 18. And this abuse can come from really anyone But usually it's going to always be people that we trusted and expected to be the ones to protect us. It's fathers, stepfathers, uncles, cousins, even siblings. It could be your own mother. So like Nia Long said in her interview, some of us have never seen a marriage work. That doesn't mean that we don't want to be mothers still. That doesn't mean we don't believe in love and that we would have loved to have the fucking fairy tale. But life does not always play out perfectly. And humans of all types, races, genders should know that as adults, especially by now. Life is not perfect. It's definitely not a fairy tale. No woman chooses to be with an abuser. We just don't. We may have gone through our own abuse in childhood where that is our comfort zone because usually children grow up and they marry someone like their fucking parents. So if your father was abusive, you think that whatever he was doing because that's your dad and you love him, that that was love. You may not really see the flags that everyone's talking, those red flags that everyone's talking about. You may want to just for once be able to believe in someone because you're tired of not trusting anybody. Whatever the reason, it is never the victim's fault. The victim didn't harm anyone. 
Usually all they did was love someone too goddamn much. Maybe they wanted children and they just wanted to be a mother. And I'm only going to speak for women on this channel because men need to create their own spaces. Because women are dying at such a higher rate than men are. We are at such higher abuse rates than males are in this country and in this world. Stop shaming single mothers. It's not okay. It is okay to want to be a mother and not want a husband. Make your life and your happiness a priority and always, always, always love yourself more. Because when you love yourself more, you will always choose yourself. And when things get too bad, you're going to get out because you're going to know, I love myself and I love, and because I'm able to love myself more, I can protect myself and get out of things that don't serve me. And that allows me to protect my children. Or even if you're single, it allows you to save yourself. Take care, everyone. Live your best life. Ignore the people who have so much to say. They don't matter. They don't matter. They don't sign your paychecks. They don't pay your bills. They don't help you raise your kids. They're not there if you don't have kids to do anything with you, not even go to brunch. Why do we care what people think? The only person that matters at the end of the day is what you think about your life, what you want for your life, and the relationship and goals and purpose that is set before you between you and God. That's all that matters. That's all that ever matters. That's all that ever will matter. Rest in peace, Catherine. Rest in peace to all the Catherines of this world. And I pray that her children are saved from that psycho. I only wish, because I can't say that she didn't do it, but I only wish Catherine would have called the cops on him when he was being abusive so she could have records that other family members or other foster care, whomever could, people like even us could see that video and they could say, yeah, he definitely had a pattern of, abu of abuse. She called the cops on him. But I, again, like I said, I'm not going to blame the victim. I fucking refuse. I fucking refuse. I will not do it. Catherine did nothing wrong. She didn't hurt anybody. She was essentially just living her life. She was a mother. She was probably someone's, she was someone's daughter. We know that. You can't just be here and not have a, a family, a parents. Someone had to have created you. I don't blame her or any of the Catherines. Any of abuse victims, any victims, period. I will not do it. And when you all hear me on other channels and I'm going in on child free slash childless people, it's because I'm reacting to how you abuse single mothers and children. And that's what it is. That's right. That's what exactly what it is. You're discriminating against us and you're being abusive to us mentally, emotionally. Because people can say whatever they want to say, but kids are very smart and children can see that abuse. They know when people don't like them. They focus, they function off of energy better than anybody. So thanks everyone for watching. Please share this video with others and try to get this word out. Get this demon away from these children. Let the courts decide. And I pray that Catherine, even in death, will get justice. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.